In this video, I'm talking about the differences between being a sub and starting on your team. And some of the things you want to think about if you are a sub trying to get on the team. So usually the reason someone starts on a team is because either they've got some physical ability that makes them you know, a better player or they've got more skill or they've got a higher football or hurling IQ. So those three categories, we'll call them physical abilities, which is like fitness and strength. We've got skill, which is you know whatever skill it is in that particular sport. And we've got the IQ, so how smart you are. And a big one in football in particular is the kind of turnover rate. So you could be super, super physical, you could have a lot of skill, but if you constantly turn over the ball and make errors all the time and your IQ isn't that high, then you're less likely to start. So first of all, if you are a sub, what I would say is for your height, figure out where your advantages can be. So if you're quite short, you're never going to have enough strength and power to overpower a guy that's a foot taller than you. If you're five foot five and you're coming up against a guy that's six foot, you know, to think that you're going to overpower him is, is largely going to be a waste of your time. So if you're like a really sharp player, then you probably want to focus on you know, working on your agility, your quickness, working on your fitness. And you probably want to you know, spend less time thinking about getting as big and as strong as possible because ultimately, if you come up against a six foot guy, you don't stand a chance. So if you're six foot two, six foot three, and you're a little bit on the heavier side, and your fitness isn't quite where it needs to be, and you're playing in around midfield, then you probably don't want to be spending your time focusing on getting stronger because you're probably big enough anyway on the pitch and you probably have enough weight to throw your strength around and to be effective. Whereas if you focused on losing body fat and improving your overall fitness or your endurance, you'd probably be a more effective player. So the small guy needs to be working on getting fit, getting quick, getting agile. And the bigger guy that's maybe carrying a bit of weight doesn't need to be focusing on getting really, really strong. They need to be focusing on their fitness and maybe cutting a bit of body fat. Now, if you're somewhere in the middle of those two, maybe you're kind of six foot tall and kind of you're middling in all those areas, then you want to focus on what position you're going for. So that's the first thing, physically, think about what attributes if you had could make you the best for your height because the height is the one thing you can change if you're trying to identify skill wise where you might be lacking then you probably want to look at all the different facets of the game so all the different skills of the game so kick pass hand pass striking the ball catching and you want to identify where am i strong where am i weak and what is most appropriate for me based on my position so if you're a corner back you don't need to be practicing shooting points <laughs> if you're corner forward though obviously that's a big part of your game now that's a kind of obviously very basic and you need to understand that. But what I would look at is I would look at kind of a, the broad range of skills across the board. As an example, if you're running to the right, you're right-handed and right-legged, it's going to be easier for you to make a hand pass and a kick pass in hurling or in football. If you're running to the left and you're hitting now, you're either striking off your bad side, you're hand passing off your bad side, you're kicking off your bad side, how well are you able to execute that skill? because that could be the reason why you're turning over ball a lot in a game, and that could be the reason why you're not starting. So I would, in your own head, have decided on if I'm going to the left and I need to be able to get rid of the ball, I need to be good at hand passing off my left hand. You don't need to be really good at kicking off your left leg, as long as you can hand pass off your left leg, because you need something to get yourself out of trouble. And then you know in your head that you're not going to be kicking off your left, you're always going to be kicking off your right. So you're always gonna be turning onto your right. So having little simple tricks like that can help you improve as a player because that helps you with your skill execution because you're executing skills that you're comfortable with, but also helps you with your decision making and your IQ because you're deciding that if I am going left, I have my hand pass as an option and my kick pass is never on. So that's just a kind of a broad idea in terms of how you look at your training structure and what you practice. Now, on top of that, this applies obviously to subs, but it also applies to anyone who's looking to perform. Really what you want to be making sure you're doing is getting in your repetitions. So if you're a sub in a game and you go through the warm-up and then you go, the match is on and you sit in the sideline for the entire game, let's say that's an hour. The person that's in your position has gotten an hour of training behind them and you've just sat on the sideline for that hour. So that person has benefited from that hour whereas you've done nothing. So you really need to invest another hour on top of that to catch that person. So if you're not starting in a game, go and do some runs after, go do some skills work after. Identify who's in your position and ask yourself, am I doing more than that person? Because if you're not doing more than that person, it's very unlikely that you're gonna catch that person and get onto the team. Really, this all comes down to how much time are you willing to invest? And that goes right back to that first video. 
how much time are you willing to invest into this? Because ultimately, the person that's going to be starting is the person who's invested the most time. Now, it's not just purely practice. It's not just about going down and kicking the ball around or, or pucking the ball around. It's about being intelligent about your practice. It's about perfect practice. So if you're learning a musical instrument, if I just pick up a guitar and I start strumming and trying to make music and I don't have any sheets or any music notes or any teachers to teach me, then I'm really going nowhere. But if I have some kind of plan where I'm learning an A chord and then a C chord and then a D chord, and I'm practicing those and I follow a set routine of lessons over time, then I get better much quicker. So that's perfect practice. So you've got to think about your game as perfect practice and when I'm at training, what am I doing for the 20 minutes before training? Am I just chatting to the lads and messing around with a ball, maybe doing a crossbar challenge, or am I actually practicing those skills that I need in the game, hand passing off my left, shooting, kick passing, whatever it might be. So really look at your time and break down your time and ask yourself, are you getting in those repetitions? Are you doing more repetitions than the guy that's in your position? And if not, there's your issue, go address that. Um, I was a sub for a long, long time. And the one thing that I said to myself was that I was always going to go do that extra bit of work. So, so if there was a game and I wasn't starting in the game, I, I would go do the runs afterwards. I would go do some separate skills work afterwards because I knew I needed to catch up with that person that was in my position. If I'm ever at training, I'm always trying to do my repetitions. So if there's a break period, I'm trying to do some solos. Before training, I'm doing kick passing or shooting or hand passing or doing some kind of skills work. And when I'm here in the gym, doing my gym work, I'm trying to maximize the time that I spend here. So rather than taking any rest periods, I'm working on balance or some kind of rehab or some kind of corrective exercise to help improve my performance. And, and guys, that's all it is. It's, it's, it's just an investment of time and being smart with your time and knowing what to do with your time. And that's what's going to make you better. So if you're a sub, figure out, be aware of the time that you're investing because you're going to be sitting on the sidelines versus the time that the person that's in your position is investing. And you got to just go do more than them and be consistent with that. Now, you might say to yourself, well, I train way harder than this person. And I'm doing way more and I'm doing extra gym work and they're not doing it. And why are they in my position? That can come back to when they were younger. Maybe they spent a lot more time playing sport when they were younger. Maybe they're five years older than you and they've got an extra five years of experience. Or maybe they've had better eating patterns over the last 10 years when they were younger as a child growing up. And as a result of that, they've got more physical attributes than you have. So what someone does as a child can really influence how well they are as a sports person when they're older in their teens or their 20s. So how they're reared basically can influence how good they are. When you hear about the best sports people in the world, their parents have basically bred it into them since a very young age. Just to give you an example, I was a sub about six years ago on the Junior B team with my club. Yeah, I sat on the sideline for a Junior B match. I came on with about five minutes to go. We lost that match and we got knocked out. And two years later, I was playing senior inter-county football uh, with Limerick. And the only reason I was able to do that was because, again, I put in the effort. I tried to practice as perfectly as I could and I was as smart as possible with my time. I hope you enjoyed the video. That's all for this one. See you later. Slot.